Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. In this video, three post-fight reviews and thoughts on the what next for the different fighters involved. We'll start with Fraser Clark. He was having his pro debut. And then we'll go on to the card in Germany where you had Jose Ladaway. He was headlining against Dusan Velotic. That was a fun fight and we'll get to that and also touch on Murad Aliyev who was having a second pro fight, the French Olympian. And a very strange ending and somewhat, in my view, controversial, although you wouldn't sort of think it based on what happened. But Fraser Clark, so this was his first fight in the paid ranks, and it wasn't exactly against the opponent I think he would have thought that he might have been matched against, but ultimately they literally had to pull a guy off the street just, you know, very shortly in the day or two before the fight. Actually, Jake Darnell. He was at one of the events in fight week, and I don't know how it came about that he ended up facing Fraser Clark, but he had one fight in bare knuckle from a number of years ago, and obviously, like, Clark was coming into this O-O-N-O, and, o. and yeah, one of these things, though, that he certainly didn't have the background of Clark, a decorated amateur, coming off an Olympic bronze medal from Tokyo 2021, and it was apparent pretty much from the get-go that there was a golf in class. And he tried his best. He, he didn't go in there and do what some journeymen do and fall over. He actually gave it a bit of a go. You know, there was a bit, a bit of head movement, a bit of feints. You know, he tried to throw a few shots, body and head. But ultimately, he was broken down pretty quickly. And I think the one thing that we can take away from this fight, and I don't, there's really not too much to take away, is the punch selection from Fraser Clark and the variation of punches that he was throwing was good. He sort of was working body and head, mixing in uppercuts, hooks, straight rights, a couple of really good crunching straight rights in that final flurry. And obviously, this was all over under a round. As expected against the late notice opponents, and especially one this late notice and this inexperienced, it was expected. And I saw that there were a number of people with uh, bets for first round stoppages, and that certainly paid dividends. And there was some talk in the post fight from Ben Shalom and also Fraser Clark that um, the original opponent had pulled out, and then obviously uh, due to COVID, and then there was a, a trouble getting other opponents, and then they had to settle on Jake Darnell. Uh, I wasn't even aware that there was an opponent confirmed because I never saw anything that said who Fraser Clark was fighting. So. It sort of seemed a little bit shambolic trying to get him an opponent, but they were obviously, you know, for, for good reason, trying to get him a slot on this card and make sure that he had his pro debut on this card. A lot of eyeballs on this card. One of the bigger cards of the year to, to date and will probably be one of the biggest cards in the UK for the entire year. So having him, I think it was, what, third or fourth uh, from the top, you know, good exposure. He went in there, did the business, and at the end of the day, uh, he said that as well. He said it was a bit of a soft touch, but with the opponent changes, he couldn't do anything about that, influence what happened. He said, my job, just do what I do best. And ultimately, we saw him go in there, get that first round stoppage. Hard to take too much from it, but I did like the way that he set up his punches, good variation. He moves on, 1-0, and oh, and I would expect, given how much of a soft touch that was, we could see him relatively soon again, maybe in the next month or two. There's a couple of different Sky and Boxer cards coming out. Why not roll them out there? But I guess the problem will become, and I suspect some of it sort of factored into what happened here, Clark is obviously a decorated amateur and all that, as I mentioned. He's a bit of a name. And they're looking to clearly push him. So the price that opponents want to basically get beaten up and taken out is going to be at a premium because it's not just some any old 1-0 guy. It's a guy where Sky and Boxer are invested in him doing well and giving him opportunities and people are just going to ask for a decent amount of money to face him. And I certainly suspect that sort of you know came into it here because when you looked at the rest of the undercard, it was way for thin. It looked like they spent about $73 on the undercard. It was not flash. A lot of prospects, a lot of sort of no marks. It was, you know, the money was all in the main event. And we know that and, you know, we know why. But um, hopefully they can secure him an opponent um, a little further out next time. Someone with a bit of an established record in boxing uh, and hopefully can take him a couple of rounds. 
I, I think that's going to be what's of benefit at this point. I mean, Fraser Clark has got decent pop, but he's not a massive puncher. So I'm not seeing him, as he climbs further up the ranks, knocking out guys at world level. He's going to have to rely on his skills. So why not get him the super durable journeyman that can take him around so he can get some benefit out of it now. But moving on to the card in Germany. So you had this headlined by Jose Ladaway and uh, Dusan Velotic. So originally this was going to be the co-main event. Zahn Kosobutsky was meant to be headlining, but there was COVID in his camp. And that was according to a, a statement from Johan Dorpe, his opponent, and the fight was pulled. Very quiet. Hasn't really been much on it, much said, apart from what I've seen that Dorpe said. But anyway, this was a pretty fun fight. And I was thinking the way that Jose Ladaway came out, how aggressive he was, that he was at risk of gassing because in that first round, like a bull out of a gate, just come forward, seek and destroy, letting his hands go. It was, you know, a lot of power punches and especially early on, he wasn't that accurate. He was throwing a lot of hard shots. Uh, either they were sort of blocked, just missing entirely, or just sort of cuffing shots. There was the odd one getting through, the odd left hook, that sort of thing. But I was thinking, well, he's really sort of going for it. This is, feels like a three-round or rounds or bust strategy. And on the other side, you had Dusan Velotic, who was an unbeaten prospect coming into this. He was, what, five and O with one draw, and you had uh, Jose Ladaway, who was uh, six and O. And Dusan Velotic is no soft touch. So I knew that this was going to go some rounds and could be competitive. And certainly early on, it was. You had Dusan Velotic responding with quite a few counter rights, the old uppercut. He was having some success. But the thing that became apparent pretty early was that Dusan Velotic just wasn't putting a dent in Jose Ladaway. Whereas you felt by about after the third round, you could see Dusan Velotic starting to feel the weight of the punches, the pressure just, you know, he was wearing the worst of it out of the exchanges. You could see him visibly starting to get a little bit ragged. It was actually very entertaining. I think it was uh, just in my notes here. I think I had round two was more of a sort of a, a slugfest. I'll just get to it. Yeah, it felt like a bit of a firefight at different times in round two, and they were both having success. But it kind of felt like at some point it was going to have to just slow down a little bit. And that sort of came in spots, sort of round four-ish, more round five. Uh, but then Jose Ladaway would just keep stepping it up. He would get back on it, march forward, and he was landing a lot of heavy power shots. And what wasn't helping was he'd already clocked on to that Dusan Velotic when trying to avoid hooks in that was ducking down and to the same side every time and he was catching him as he was ducking so he was you know wearing a lot of heavy leather and ultimately you could see this wearing up and I sort of thought maybe it was round six I'll just get back to maybe it was round five you know his eye his right eye was um, really starting to sort of close up and it felt like there was some moments where he had some real bursts but maybe it was one of those last stand sort of situations. But then he managed to get out of the round. And then round six was a little bit of a slower pace for the first two minutes before uh, Jose Ladaway sort of stepped it up. But it was a case that he was visibly, this is Dusan Velotic, getting ground down throughout this fight. And I was really impressed with the conditioning of Ladaway in terms of the cardio. You know, aesthetically, you know, he's way heavier than he needs to be. Bearing in mind, in the amateurs, he fought well under heavyweight, sort of the earlier part of his amateur career. Came up later, sort of stacked on some beef. And, you know, he looks like he's probably carrying about 20 pounds too much, even at this stage. He looked a little bit in better condition for this fight, and he needed to be because obviously he threw a lot of punches. But um, yeah, round seven, he just started to really catch Dusan Velotic as he was tiring even more, um, especially that last minute of that round, ducking into shots. Uh, it was almost like that last minute that um, Jose Ladaway couldn't miss. And you sort of thought the writing was on the wall. This was a 10-round fight, by about, but by about the end of that seventh round, you sort of thought, well, this if it continues going the, this way, eventually he's going to get sort of you know, dropped or taken out. But ultimately, we didn't see that because between rounds, Dusan Velotic uh, retires on a stool. So a win to Jose Ladaway 
advances to 7-0. Good performance. I was impressed with um, his the the pace that he kept up for the majority of the fight. There was the odd round where he sort of took the foot off the gas just for a, a bit of a breather, but he was never really made to pay in those spots by Dusan Velatic, who just you know seemed to be hanging on. But after about three rounds, it really started to unravel, and um, yeah, Jose Lardaway for the most part controlled this fight, ground him down, got a very good win in my view. Good rounds, good test against a guy who was game and tried to, you know, counter him, tried to, re you know, these guys sometimes were swinging from the absolute fences to land knockout blows, but uh, you just didn't sort of seem to have uh, any dent put in Lardaway and um, Dusan Velotic as well. He demonstrated a very good uh, chin. He took a lot of punishment. A lot of clean right hands, left hooks. He was uh, obviously stepping into and ducking into uppercuts as well. He um, did show a good chin, but after those seven rounds, it was enough. So good win. He moves on Jose Ladaway and Dusan Velotic. Yeah, want to see him again. He is obviously got some talent and can have some good fights and be in some good fights. I don't think he should be written off completely on the, on the strength of this performance. But uh, yeah, I mean, in my estimation... Ladaway, who's been a little bit of a question, I think he certainly is one of the better prospects floating around, but they need to move him. I mean, he turned pro a little bit later. I think they really do need to, um, kind of like Zahn Kosobutsky and some other guys in the heavyweight division, just need to push them, start really getting them to, in some bigger and better challenging fights. On the undercard, so you had the French Olympian Murad Aliyev. He was facing a guy called uh, Dorde Tomic. And uh, Aliyev, a.k.a. the White Wolf, gets the stoppage in round two. So he had him down in round one. But round two, this was, it was really strange because there was a bit of success from Aliyev coming forward. He was good on the jab in this fight. You know, he landed a couple of decent straight lefts, had his man backing up. But they get tangled up. And here's a picture of them getting tangled up. And this is where it starts to get weird. Because effectively what happened here, and you can go back to the Universe and Box Promotion YouTube channel, find this uh, fight and uh, view it for yourself in its entirety. But it was a case where they were tangled up and then the White Wolf, Murad Aliyev, basically escorts Dorde Tomic to the ground. And at that point, there's a big punch that comes in and here's it on screen from uh, Murad Aliyev. And while he both knees clearly visibly on the canvas. So the referee doesn't admonish him, doesn't do anything. What he does do is administers a count. And one, it wasn't a knockdown, but two, he arguably could have been disqualified for the punch on the ground. Not even warned, nothing was said. Uh, so then Dorde Tomic gets a count. He beats the count. And although he's walking away to the other side of the ring, he's got his faculties about him. At about eight, he sort of, or nine, turns around to the referee, looks good to continue. The referee waves it off. Bizarre. It was absolutely bizarre. And I think Aliyev can count himself um, lucky with that one. But clearly not a knockdown in my view. And then obviously the uh, the foul when he was on the ground. So um, yeah, a bit lucky really. But um, the uh, White Wolf, as it were, Murad Aliyev advances. So if you didn't know, he was the one that was disqualified against Fraser Clark at the Olympics for some of his dirty tactics. So, you know, there is a bit of form there. But uh, anyway, if you caught the cards... What do you make of them all? Fraser Clark gets a win, as does Jose Ladaway and Murad Aliyev. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.